Saloon is the biggest game reserve in Africa. Four times bigger than the Serengeti. Bigger than the whole of Switzerland. Most of Saloon is covered in dense Miombo woodland. But north of the Rafiji River, it opens out into wooded savanna, dominated by flat-topped Tagalala trees. This is our tent in Sulu first morning. This is the veranda facing the river. As well as massive crocs like this one in front of our tent, Salou contains huge numbers of other game. 160,000 buffalo, 60,000 elephant, 40,000 hippos in the river, 3,000 lions, the list goes on. The track to the breakfast tent. We're coming up to the breakfast tent then. Swimming pool. Not to the. This is where we eat. This is Billy Wiz, a golden palm weaver, also infamous as the local cornflake thief. Okay. <laughs> if you look carefully, you can see a giraffe standing just behind the Maasai. There we go, giant millipede. He used to call them Kenya trains. Oh, Chongololo. This is an African open build stalk. And its bill has got a, that shape for getting snails and mussels out of the shells, which is what it, the only thing it eats. We are on the river, leaving the boat dock. So that's the camp from the Rafiji River. Gerard's doing a great job. This is the main river channel. Here's my kukul again. How long do you reckon it is then? Teeny weeny, maybe crocodile. After rising in the mountains to the south and west of Sulu, the Rafiji River flows through the heart of the park. The Rafiji Basin drains most of south and central Tanzania. The Ruaha River joins the Rafiji in the north of the park. Sometime after that, the river splits into a series of channels and swamps. And it's in this area that the Impala camp's located. The camp is right next to Lake Siwandu which is named after the former chief who used to live in the area. Hi. <laughs> The huge trees in the background here are called Barassus palms. See how much depth of water there is in there? Yeah. <laughs> 
As well as all the big game, over 350 species of birds have been seen in Samoa. We were really quite lucky to surprise this bull elephant crossing the river because they feel quite vulnerable and they don't normally attempt it if they think there's any people about. As you can see, they do get a bit edgy and this one did actually try and warm us off a little bit. But once he'd got onto dry land he sort of settled himself down and he was uh, not bothered at all and we actually got really quite close to him. Mm. That's close enough for me. This is the whistling thorn and it grows the galls to provide a home for ants. In return the ants protect the tree by trying to bite anything that eats it. When the wind blows across the hole in the gall, the whole tree whistles. And there's not focusing. Thank you, <laughs> it's the really high population of these animals that gives Sulu its nickname, Giraffic Park. These, as we all know, are Maasai Giraffe.
don't like getting close to lines. <laughs> oh, big old things. Go on, I love your picture. Maybe. Wonder where those girls are going there. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Are they Lichtensteins or another one? Which sort? Which sort of heart beast? Are they Lichtensteins or the Swains or? It was a bit of a trick question because you only find Lichtenstein's heart beast in Salu anyway. Off they go. Yeah. Bouncing along. The oldest male is the one in the front. Uh -huh. So all other females behind and the young they follow. While other hunters. <coughs> These are blue wildebeest or brindled gnu. They're the same sort that you find in the Serengeti that do the Great Migration every year. But these boys and girls have obviously got far more sense and are staying put. They generally like the more open, wooded areas of Salu. They wouldn't be found in the Miombo. Oh yeah, you see the white cut on the back when they fly, yeah. They're nice when they're flying. Very graceful, my up there all. After watching this colony of bee eaters from the boat, we were completely dropped on when Gerard pulled up at the riverbank and walked us up to the top of the little cliff where they had this surprise in store. It was absolutely fantastic. Another one of Hemingway's grey ghosts heading off into the bush. <laughs> Too late, Mister. We've got you. Oh, it's a little bit. Might be a little bit in the dark. This is called an umbrella bird for mm -hmm. obvious reasons, and he's trying to shade the water. So you can see to catch the little fish. <laughs> Just do that if you live in a hunt. I'd always wanted to have a go at catching the tiger fish. So we moored up in the middle of the river one afternoon. Oh, 
after a quick lecture on what to do if I caught a crocodile by mistake, I cast in. I managed to not get too distracted by the local hippo population. After a few minutes I had a bite and I was into a smallish tigerfish that was giving me a half decent fight. I decided that even if I land the fish, Gerard gets the job of taking it off the hook because they've got a mouthful of razor sharp little teeth. <laughs> hey, tiger fish! Hey. The camera is on. Or? The bigger one! This is the biggest crocodile I've ever seen. It must be easily 12 or 13 feet long. Gerard said that he's seen them that size trying to take baby hippos. Most boy. people had tea and biscuits delivered to the tent about 7am. This raiding party of vervet monkeys knew all about it. Anybody foolish enough to leave anything outside, or even the tent door slightly unzipped, was asking to have everything pinched. You're not having my cup of tea, mate. This is the block mangoes. Very long man. Yeah. We'd all but given up on seeing any wild dogs. But on the last morning, as we were heading towards the airport, Gerard spotted a single footprint in the sand and on the track. So we headed off in that direction. First we passed some hyenas heading the same way and we thought they might be looking for a free meal. Then later on we saw some kudu and impala all checking out the same direction. So we headed eventually into a big thicket of bush and we came across a pack of five wild dogs resting up. Not nice. Unlike lions and other carnivores, in wild dog society, it's the females that have to leave the pack that they grew up in, find a mate, start the nucleus of a new pack somewhere else. Size for size, the painted dog has the hardest bite of any carnivore except for the Tasmanian devil. African wild dogs have a very strong coconutty doggy smell and it's thought that they roll in the ground to try and disguise it before they go off hunting so that other game doesn't smell them coming. At the turn of the 20th century, there were thought to be about half a million wild dogs in Africa. Farmers shot them, trapped them, poisoned them mercilessly, almost to extinction. Now, there's thought to be somewhere between three and a half and five thousand in the whole of Africa. Up to 1,500 of those live in Salu. Salu is 56,000 square kilometres in size, so the chances of finding a pack at any one time are quite remote. We were really lucky. We were apparently the only people to find a pack in the last three weeks. There we go. You got it. Mind his ankle. Wait more.